how can I become a more optimistic person? This is a question I get often, and the ironic thing for me is I never used to think of myself as an optimistic person. Uh, instead, it's something that if I am optimistic, it's something that I have cultivated and worked on over time, like a muscle. So let me share with you how that muscle works and how I think we can all build it a little bit. Okay, first of all, in the book, The How of Happiness by Sonia Lubomirsky, famous positive psychology researcher over at the University of California, she posits a model that's like a big circular pie chart that says 50% of our happiness is genetic, 10% is circumstantial, and 40% is based on our intentional activities. So of course, everyone's gonna have a little genetic baseline. If you have two kids, you notice one's more happy than the other. One's more optimistic than the other. Somebody's a glass half full person, somebody's a glass half empty person. However, the thesis of the model as I see it is, nah, 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 whatever. No, it's not glass half full, half empty. It's the glass is refillable. Because of that huge 40% chunk on the bottom of the pie chart, we can fill the glass with whatever we want. We can learn to become more optimistic. Okay, how do we do that? Here are three things I highly recommend. Number one is no news, no news. The news is a horrible scourge. It is, if it bleeds, it leads. It is programmed and designed to give you bad news all the time. Why? Because the amygdala in the back of your brain is looking for negativity. You are used to fighting or flighting. You have 200,000 years of evolution looking for the next big tiger that's gonna kill you. We want to see car accidents. We're interested in fires. We want to know the terrible thing the president said. Why? Because our brains are programmed to survive. The news will constantly feed us an endless stream of negativity for the rest of our lives if we so let it. No news. I have no news apps on my phone. I have no news. I don't follow any news sites on any social media. I don't get any newspapers delivered. I used to. I was a news junkie. It took me a long time to recognize it's a business. The first thing you can do to become a more optimistic person is no news. Get rid of the news. Believe me, You'll still know what's going on because it's impossible not to look at the little TV screens in the corner of the elevator, right? You're not putting your head in the sand. You're just consciously deciding where to spend your brain time. Okay, that's number one. Number two, number two, hang out with someone who you find to be optimistic. This sounds so obvious, but actually very few of us think consciously about which of our friends fill us with positive moods. Right, so how do you do this? Well, you just think out, out loud to yourself. I, I literally, I went to a dinner party with my wife the other day, and we got there, it was a couple we didn't know super well, we knew the other couple decently well, and they said to us, Neil, Leslie, you know what? We invited you here because we feel good about ourselves when we're around you. You always cheer us up. You're, all, you're our, our most optimistic friends. That's what they said to us. And me and Leslie are like, we're not super optimistic people, we're just normal people. But the point is, they made a conscious and intentional effort to hang out with us more. Who in your life could you bring into your life a little deeper? Could you invite them to a concert? Could you go play cards with them? Could you invite them over to watch a basketball game? Think who that person is and add a little bit more of them and maybe a little less of the energy vampire who's sucking the optimism out of your life. Guess what I have on my iPhone? In my notes file, you know what I have? It's a little list, it says awesome things. I know what you're thinking. Oh, that's easy for you to say, Neil. You're the awesome things guy. You wrote a thousand awesome things.com, that's my blog. You wrote the book of awesome and the sequel's on the bookshelf behind me. But you know why I wrote all those things? It's not because I'm the happy guy, it's because I had this list in my iPhone. So, I just went to a basketball game, okay? If I look at my awesome things list in my iPhone, I've literally written down a few things. I remember, it's like, the guy who throws out the t-shirts at the basketball game, the person who starts the like slow clap for the audience, right? When the crowd all gasps at the same time, <gasps> but everyone does that, right? Like these are just tiny little moments, but while at the game, I just, I'm like, that's pretty awesome. I'm essentially creating what Oprah would call a gratitude list, an ongoing repository of things that make me happy. Call it cheesy, call it smarmy, call it whatever you want. You can call it a jar of awesome in your house. My point is, have somewhere where you are writing down the things that make you happy throughout the day. I have that list, it is the basis of my blog and my books and stuff like that, but the list itself is what keeps me going and helps my mind and the neural pathways in my brain constantly look for, seek out, and find happy things. So when I'm not feeling too happy, I can read the list again. Okay, those are my three ways to become a more optimistic person. 
And if you liked what you just watched, if you enjoyed this little video, give me some love, hit the subscribe button, let me know what works for you, how do you work and train your brain to become more optimistic, leave me a comment below. My promise is that I will read and reply to every single one. Thank you so much for watching.